Super. What a, what a fun stage, right? Can't, can't yes. wait to see it start to spin. Um, thank you so much for being here. To quickly introduce myself, I'm Reshma Sahoni, co-founder, partner at Seedcamp. We are a, for all the founders out there um, looking for venture capital, we are a early, early stage fund, um, funding companies across Europe to, to take them global. And we're about a 140 million pound fund based in London, but investing all across Europe. And we're gonna get into that in just a second, but we're proud investors of Synthesia, um, which is, uh, Lourdes will go much more into that, but it, it is a um, generative AI company in the video space. Um, you know, absolutely, definitely a unicorn story in, in many ways. So actually, over to you, uh, Lourdes. Love to have you introduce yourself. Go, go, you're one of four founders, and I actually wanted to also mention what an incredible European story it is. You're Spanish. Your other co-founder, who's also on the research side, is German. And then Victor and Stefan are, you know, the Nordic unicorn heroes. And so we've got the local Nordic flavor, too. So true European story. And then you connected in UK, which we, you will go into, which is an incredible melting pot, right? So yeah, over to you, Lourdes, if you can just go, give us a little background. And I think when we were talking backstage, you talk about going back decades. So maybe going, go back a little bit into the decades that it's taken to get to where Synthesia is today. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you, Reshma, for, for, for the introduction. So um, I'm a professor of computer vision. Um, computer vision is currently a field that's at the intersection of computer graphics, machine learning, um, and AI. Um, and the area of research where I've been working now for nearly th three decades, really, wow. <laughs> um, is, is an area called 3D vision. So what we do in 3D vision is that we try to uh, recover the third dimension that you lose when you take a picture or when you take video. Um, so videos and, and, uh, and photos, they're two-dimensional. We try to reconstruct 3D models of the world given just maybe a single image or a bunch of images that have been taken. So this technology, we've been working on this for decades. Um, to start with, we were solving problems like you know, we were moving across a room, trying to build a 3D model, maybe for a robot to be able to move around, avoid obstacles, and being able to interact with the scene. Um, but what my team has, has focused on for a long time was to solve a, an even harder problem, which is can we generate 3D models of dynamic objects, where it's not just about reconstructing the shape, that shape is changing in time, it's a dynamic uh, shape, and therefore, we have to recover those dynamics as well. So you know, this is a really hard problem because we have a single camera that's moving at something that's 3D and it's changing in time. So mathematically, it's a very complex problem to solve. Um, but the power of having worked in, in this problem, the power that it gave us was that we were able to create these models that once we actually have these models, we could also then edit the models, so we could animate the models, and given those, the new parameters of the model, we could synthesize new video. And this is where it became incredibly important for Synthesia. That's why the research that myself and the other academic co-founder, Matthias Niesner, we were both working in this space, and it was really important to have that expertise uh, in-house and, and to know how to you know, build these, these models because yeah. it's a fundamental technology to create the avatars um, it, that we Yeah, then... and actually, um, maybe go into what Synthesia is doing today because yes. I think, you know, it'll just give a little more... Because I think when we're thinking about 3D modeling nowadays, I mean, the, the reach is incredible. With, you think about driving, you think about manufacturing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... But you guys are, you know, squarely in, in kind of the, the video generation space. So maybe yes. talk a little bit more, and I'm going to still go into a little, little more of your uh, origin story. But yeah, for flavor for the audience on what Synthesia is doing today. Yes. Yeah, so Synthesia, we are a video generation platform. Um, so it's a, an online platform where users users go and they can generate video directly from text. 
So you type the text and you get a video of a, of a presenter, and this is one of our avatars, um, saying the words that, that you have typed in, in the script. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a platform that empowers users to transform text into, into video. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. actually what the product does at the moment. And we're going to get into the power of just how much commercial value there is in that in a little bit. But I guess take us back to you know, the origin story. Um, again, what, what a lot of founders, we well, what a lot of people we come across, um, especially maybe at an event like this, is you get you know, research folk dreaming, how can I make this commercial? And they are in universities. And you get commercial talent going, I can sell anything, but I, I, I would like it to be something you know, a bit, bit more technical. I mean, you guys have a unicorn sto kind of story within that. I think it's very difficult, the fact that the four of you came about. And so, how did you meet each other? Yeah, so there, there are four co-founders. Two of us are academics, uh, two of us are professors. I'm in London at University College London, and Matthias is at TU Munich in Germany. Um, so we knew each other because we were working in the same research field. We go to the same conferences and we read each other's papers and we know about each other's research. On the other hand, um, Victor, who's the CEO, and Stefan, who's the CFO, they were um, both entrepreneurs in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Right. But they also had a background in computer science. Right, okay. And they started looking at the research that was coming out of our labs. And they really got incredibly inspired, and the inspiration really came from, from them that, that video was a very, very powerful tool. And video could change completely the way in which we can communicate. And, but, but right now, there, well, at the time, at the time yeah. <laughs> in 2017, there weren't any video create, creation tools. Right. To create a video, you had to go to a studio, you had to spend a lot of money on equipment, on a crew, on uh, actors, right. writing a script. It was a very physical process as well that took an incredible amount of money and um, it, it took a lot of time as well. We're talking months right. to generate a high quality video. It would take maybe months to generate it. So they really saw through in our research that there was a new way of being able to, to generate video. Mm. Um, so they, they came to us and... Okay, and, I was going to ask, and, you know, in the we, dating metaphor, did you call them or did they call you? <laughs> they, they called us, really, okay. <laughs> um, you know, and said, you know, we, we, we think this could be transformational. Right. We think that this technology could really transform uh, the way in which we communicate and the way in which we make video available for everybody. Yeah. Um, and we obviously were perhaps a bit, you know, that we were scientists. We knew that, yes, we were seeing glimpses that, that the research was starting to work. Okay. But we were still far away from being able to make that into a product that was um, going to be used by, by millions of people. Yeah. And that, that's where we, we really came together. And we, you know, we really had a passion, a real, a shared passion and a shared vision that, you know, working, working together, we could, we could drive that, that research into, into a product that, that, you know, could right. be. And, and using, using the strengths of, you know, on the one hand, the very deep knowledge of the research, and on the other hand, two entrepreneurs who knew how to build a company yes. and who had a long-term vision for a company that wasn't just going to, you know, maybe be acquired in a year right, or so, right. but a long-term company that would really have impact in, in the world. So, you know, there was a lot of vision, yeah. a lot of shared passion. No, and I think, um, I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, a couple of themes is you, you guys are incredibly proud of your multi-European heritage, and you're incredibly passionate about serving users worldwide, and we'll, we'll come to that a little bit later. I think one of the things we were talking about is, um, and this question comes up a lot, is IP at universities and open papers. And so, I mean, there's a little company called OpenAI um, that's, that's formed in the recent past, 
out of papers that were you know, available very openly, right? And so it's really fascinating, again, to see OpenAI scale, your scale as well, out of papers that were out there for public, re pu public consumption. Victor you know, went, went deep into them, contacted you, and here's a company born. I mean, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit a little bit about that, about kind of the, you know, and where should we be looking for, for some of these papers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the, the area of generative uh, AI right now is, 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 is full, of, full of ideas. I think at the time, what was really important was, was to, to, um, to hire that initial team. So the, the initial team was very, uh, very, um, research focused. Okay, so, right. so our, our first 10 employees were really R&D. Wow. And yeah. we really doubled down on building the product and building the technology for, for a year or so. We didn't really have a product after a year. Right, I remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we, you know, it, it was incredibly important to have, to have a team that was, you know, all of our team were people who had their done their PhDs at um, UK universities and, um, and who were, you know, really true, true experts on, on the frontier of, of research. Yeah, and actually, so that gets into the, my last question about the early days is, you know, as you said, you didn't really have a product. It was a technology for a while. Even when we invested, I, I, I tell often it was a t technology looking around for a problem to solve. Investors generally don't like that. Um, you know, they want to know a clear problem and, and solution to the problem. A lot of startups are taught to pitch, pitch that way. But yeah, we really kind of, we, I mean, you, you get a lot of things wrong, but we were really patient and, you know, yeah. it, uh, we really wanted to see again, it felt like really powerful, um, powerful implementation of research into the commercial world. So maybe moving on into commercialization, can you talk a little bit about product market fit? I mean, three yes. years, I think, you guys were tinkering, you're, you know, you're trying to um, get this technology in the hands of eight billion people, not quite, and, and then you've you know, hit onto a, an amazing product market fit, but maybe talk, yes. talk about that journey a little bit. Yeah, so, so this, this stage, um, yeah, we, we call it the wilderness stage. <laughs> When we, we knew we were onto something and, and we knew that what we were doing was really important and that it, that it really had a future. But yeah, in, investors were, were kind maybe enough to believe us <laughs> to the point where, where you guys were, were investing on us at the early stage. But, but there was no, the, the product wasn't quite there because these were all research ideas that, that hadn't quite really turned into a product. So initially what we were working on was AI dubbing, mm -hmm. so yeah. we, we weren't working on text to video from the beginning. We started off thinking that AI dubbing was going to be our market. So what we could do was take a video, an existing video, and we could dub it um, into another language, and we could do this in a native way in the sense that the lip sync would be perfect because we have generated a new video where the lips are moving accordingly to what's being said. So we thought, you know, yes, this, this is going to be the product. But in the end, what was happening was that we just had bespoke projects with the BBC, with different right. companies. They would come to us. We would solve a specific problem. This would take a long time. Obviously, these were individual contracts. So really, the turning point for the company was when we cracked the technology of being able to go from text to video. So writing the script and being able to generate the video directly. Because before, you had to have an existing video already. Yeah. We were just adding something nice on top, the cherry on top of you know, being able to and dub it into that, different was that languages. all internal? Or is it because the market outside is developing you know, as well, and interest outside is, is developing so much also? So that, that was really internal. Okay. That, that, that idea that, that text to video was going to be the, 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 the real product for us, the product that, would, uh, that, that, would, yeah, that people would use, that um, enterprises would, would actually use, 
that that really came internally. This we're talking 2020. Yeah. This was a long time before ChatGPT appeared. Where you know now we're very used to typing text right. and getting text as an output, typing text and getting an image or or even a video. But in those days, that that wasn't really there. So we were really pioneers of being able to turn text into video, and. At the time, we weren't even calling it generative right. AI. We were calling it synthetic media. Right. Um, it didn't catch on the way generative AI has. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we should have uh, we should have thought of that. <laughs> Sorry, I. Go, no, so it's yeah, okay. you were you were um, calling it synthetic media. We were calling it synthetic media, um, but we were really pioneers in in the sense of being able to. Um, yeah, to generate something that didn't exist yes. before um, from directly, directly from, from video. And, and you did mention in their enterprises, and you were really, you really kind of got them, you were listening to users, and, and, and those early customers were enterprises, and, um, you know, they adopted the technology, productized it using the products internally, and now it's moving more even externally, but I guess talk about enterprises, the, the trust building in an enterprise? Because, I mean, I think anyone who's selling to enterprises here is one of the hardest sales, right? You go through influencers, budget you know, owners, users, mm -hmm. IT, right, for implementation. I mean, if you can, talk, talk a little bit about the, yeah, the trust build, building and how enterprises kind of learned how to use Synthesia inside the company first. Yeah, so, so the... The nice thing about having this, this, this platform is that now this is a self-serve platform. So whenever one of the departments in a, in a company wants to start creating video or using video from our platform, yeah, they, they don't have to go through, through all of these channels. They can directly create an account right. um, and you know, they, could, they can start creating straight away. It's a it's a very very um, very easy entry into the product. There there are no barriers, um, but you're talking about trust, and and of course trust is is absolutely essential for us. That you know, that our company is trusted, that we're trusted with with people's um, images, you know, with right. their with their identities, etc. So the company has from day one we have taken ethics very very seriously and we've built you know like an an, an ethics um, yeah we've built ethics around around the whole company and what we have is you know we have we call it the three C's mm -hmm. so the first important thing is consent so all the videos that are generated in the platform have to be of people who have given their consent um, so we will never generate a video of, right. you know, someone uploads a video, we, we won't generate anything based on that. Um, everything has to be uh, with, with consent. The second important thing is, is control. Uh, what we don't want is for videos to go out there with uh, inappropriate content, mm -hmm. content that, that we don't want to, to appear. So rather than videos just, just being uploaded onto, onto a platform and then trying to take them down. So we, we prevent anything from happening by having very strict moderation. So all the text that's being input, right. everything is being moderated. And in that, se in that sense, we will never generate anything that, that we don't want to generate. Right. And the third uh, any C? contact that can be harmful. And the third C is, is collaboration. So we're collaborating uh, with governments, we're collaborating with other big companies and stakeholders and organizations um, to bring regulation into, into AI and to safeguard um, AI as well. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, t talking with Victor early on, you guys really did invest, unlike a lot of startups who sort of say, you know, let, let me have this problem later, you actually did put a lot of energy and resource into the three C's and bringing that, that as part of the culture at, at Synthesia and, and, and sort of something everything in the team, you know, thinks about and takes, takes seriously. Yes. I mean, I know there's been some press on, you know, I know you guys um, have had to comment on it as well because bad people are gonna do bad things. 
with great technology as, as well, but you've, you guys have really invested a ton in giving you know, consent, control, collaboration exactly. in, into, your, into your customers. Um, and we, we spent a lot of effort in, in trying to prevent that from happening. So, I mean, right. we, are, we are aware that there are, there are bad actors around and you know, that we, won't, we won't be able to catch absolutely everything, but, but we're trying. That, that's the point, yeah. that we really are trying. We're, we're trying as best as we can to prevent any, any bad content from, from going out there, from being generated in the first place. Yeah. Um, kind of just with a few minutes left, the, the, re the research side, side does not stay still. Um, you know, Synthesia keeps bringing out evolution and, and uh, the product continues to sort of create wow. Yeah. Two, I think two questions is, um, yeah, maybe the second one, which is you're, in a, you're deep into enterprise. You know, uh, as I said, uh, you have many of the Fortune 500, two, top 2,000 companies using you guys. And these contracts have moved from small num to some very small numbers to some very large numbers. But your mission has been, you know, to really get Synthesia in the hands of, uh, mm. hands of everyone out there. How far away are you from true, you know, true use that way? And yeah. where's, where is your research continuing to grow, go? Yeah, so, yeah, Victor always used to call this, you know, the, the, the dream was that anybody would be able to create a Hollywood movie in their bedroom with a, with a laptop, you know. That, that, that was really the dream that we've always had. We're not quite there yet, but I think we, we have been really trying to push forward in, in various ways. So, as you say, at the moment, it's, it's many, many enterprises are, are using our product. We also have many individual yep. users. We have a million users who, who are using the platform. Um, and the way in which we have, we have tried to, to open up to, to more and more users, more varied, um, is in various ways. So, for instance, our, our new generation of avatars are much more expressive. Mm -hmm. We call this model Express One, and they're more expressive avatars. And the idea is that now, instead of just training the model uh, based, on, based on the video and the audio, we're also training it with, with the text. Now, now it's a large foundation model that's also seeing the text. So it's also seeing the meaning of words. So now our avatars are actually making expressions and micro-expressions and moving according to what's being said. So if they're sad, they will, right. they will make the facial expressions. If they're excited, they will make the whichever facial expressions. And so that, that's been an incredible move forward in terms of opening up the, uh, the product to be applied to other areas. At the moment, we're really focusing on learning and development right. inside companies. But we want it to be used for marketing, for creating adverts, for creating short films. For that, we need the avatars to be more expressive. We've done a bit. Mm. What we're doing next is that we're going to do full body motion. So we're going to allow the avatars, just, just full body avatars that are able to move around and, and move their hands and be much more expressive. Um, other things that we're doing is that we've also made it much easier to pe for people to create their own personal avatars. Right, yes. So we, ha we have stock avatars in the platform that people can pick, but you can also create your own avatar. Before, someone had to go into a studio and film themselves with a, with a green screen behind. You know, it was a bit cumbersome, it would take time. Now, you can just take a video of yourself, in whichever background you want, in your house, in your office, you can even make various avatars of yourself with the right background, with the right environment. And, and that really, and, and now these videos, we create the avatars very quickly. Right, no, so it's they're, incredible. They're, they're we just, I just used it the, last week when um, our, we had our kind of big summit with all our investors. Exactly. And we, we actually tried to, in my last 40 seconds, I think we actually tried to hack it by me being somewhere else. <laughs> and it said you were not there in person. It wouldn't let me. So you, got, you guys do have a yes. lot of pretty, pretty exceptional technology. Good um, maybe last 25 seconds, your thoughts. 
is the next five years for the fun, and actually we glossed over the fact that you're building fun foundational models at Synthesia, but that's for the next talk. In the next five years for Synthesia, is it incremental or do you think, oh wow, you know, there's just more wow coming for, for you guys to there's deliver? This, there's going to be a, a real wow moment. I mean, the, our models are getting bigger and we're training them with more data. What you can do is, is, is much, much bigger. We're going to be able to model the whole scene. We're going to be able to model um, actors interacting with objects. And, you know, in that way, we will empower creators to create proper movies, movies. really, which is what, what Amazing. we were originally thinking of. <laughs> so, yeah, so your, your true vision, hopefully, in the coming five years. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank, thank you to all. Mm.